All right. So, so even though um, we're more of in a classical style, I'm still keeping that original bass line. And, you know, the only, the, the difference between it and the original, obviously there's no kind of groove going on. And sorry, I don't know why this is going off now. So apologies, guys. Um, The only difference is there's no groove going on and now we're just kind of in a classical style. And what I, what I do in the arrangement is I kind of take, the way I kind of take us out of this groove is by adding a couple extra beats in this three, four bar here. So if you listen. So it's like time has kind of stopped here and then the trumpet comes in. And what Kendra was referring to earlier with Billy the Kid, we were happened to play Billy the Kid on this concert. And I thought it would be kind of um, fun to throw in a little Easter egg, so to speak, of um, the line from the opening to Billy the Kid, which sounds like this. And the other reason, not just because we were playing on the concert, but I kind of felt like, um, you know, given the fact that Copeland really represented um, Amer American sound and classical music. I was kind of tying that, that idea together of Bill Withers being this representative figure in, in, um, in American popular culture as well. So there's a little line from Billy the Kid. Um, I'm, I don't wanna get like too, too theory nerdy here, but um, just like on a harmonic speaking, um, a lot of these sounds here from, from like Billy the Kid, if you see um, a little closely, the melody, it's, it's all harmonized by an interval of a fourth, um, which is the, if you, if you play on the piano from a D to a G, that's called an interval of the fourth. It's the same interval when you hear the song, Here Comes the Bride, Here Comes the Bride, or here's a, here's a, here come. Hmm. I'm sorry, oh, we're transposing the fifth, sorry, it's flipped. It's a fifth here. Um, and, and so a lot of this harmony throughout this whole thing is um is uh built on that actual fourth throughout the whole thing um let's see da, da, da. a couple other little notes about this um this opening that i want to kind of just draw your attention to um i want to actually go to the english horn uh when we get to bar 12 there's this line here so just to hear it in context a bit So that line actually comes from the B section of the song, Ain't No Sunshine, which is, I know, I know, I know, I know. And, and I thought it'd be cool to kind of build it on top of the actual um, initial A section melody here. Um, kind of moving forward to the next section, that actual line that I just mentioned, this, really becomes the whole basis for the whole next section, kind of like a buildup on, on top of that line. I kind of wanted to build on top of this motif, which comes back a few different times in the piece. So if you hear, we're at the next section now. So this line right here, we're now taking this, so this melody from Ain't No Sunshine and taking this line here, which comes from a song I played you guys just a little bit earlier called Use Me. It's a guitar and bass part from that. So the whole thing is kind of building on these two small ideas. One is the B section from, uh, from Ain't No Sunshine and this is the A section or like the, the rhythm, the main rhythmic motif from the song Use Me. Um, any questions so far? I know I'm getting a little nerdy here, but figured that's what that's what we want to do. <laughs> um, builds, builds, builds. Okay, so that really just takes us to the to the next song, which is uh, "Kissing My Love," um, which is really we're really doing it in the original soul style of it.
that's a song, Kiss of My Love. Now we're like in a real kind of soul style. And that goes on for a bit until we get to the end of it. And then I'm gonna tell you about this other kind of style of music that we incorporated into the piece. So this, this kind of beat here, You hear it swinging a bit. It's got kind of a swing to it, like ju jack ka ju ka ju ka It's not really jazz, but it's a style that comes from Washington, D.C., very famous called go-go. And um, it was a style that was created kind of in the 80s and 90s, um, kind of a, a street style of music, really, really famous in the D.C. area. And, and so we just incorporate this style into the piece to just kind of give it a bit more swing to it. So it goes from more of a straight kind of feel where you're feeling the groove in, in a more straight fashion. I'll just play the groove. And then you hear it go from straight to swung. Sorry. Ah. So it swings. So, so what we're doing here now is all of a sudden we're going from when I'm, I'm kissing my love to bringing back this motif that I pointed out earlier and use me. The same, the same motive, but this time it's swung. And what I, what I do, what we do a little bit about four bars later after kind of grooves, I'm just gonna play it from right here. So this line right here, guys, actually comes from the same song that we were just at, Kissing My Love. And this line right here is Use Me. So basically what we're doing is we're combining two songs at once. And all this string stuff doesn't really come from anywhere except my brain. I just <laughs> like to add these kind of lines over here. So we're, when it starts to really cook, you're combining two songs at once and then just add some strings on top. So now we're at our next genre of music called drum and bass. Who's heard of drum and bass there? You guys ever heard of it? Yeah? So this is what the beat kind of sounds like. I mean, excuse the quality of the MIDI, but this is your basic sound. Another name for this is breakbeat. And the reason it's called breakbeat is, and Armando can speak to this better than me, it's because it's, it's uh, the beat sounds like it's almost broken. You know, usually in popular music, so much of uh, the rhythm of popular music is based off the idea of the accents happening on beats two and four. That's why everyone claps when you're hearing like, hey, da, 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 da. when you're clapping on two and four, that's called the backbeat. And in drum and bass and breakbeat music, that backbeat is broken a little bit. So, so you hear, it's like the, the actual beat comes in these jagged places. So it kind of throws you off. And really that was a practice that was started in the time of Bill Withers and funk music, this broken beat but they just did it um, in the 70s um, at a slower tempo. Actually, I can, slow, I can slow this down so you can hear what like a, a 70s funk beat might have sounded like. Uh, so like more like, oh, my fault, there it is. So that, that's like a kind of beat. I'm gonna just play that little one more time. That's a kind of beat that you might hear in like James Brown or, or something like that. But then what happened um, in like the 80s and 90s is, is it, uh, drummers and, and musicians started experimenting with taking these beats and speeding them up. And that started becoming, it, it, was, a, uh, start, it was called drum and bass or break beat. So this is what it sounds fast now. And like our drummers in New Deco happen to like really specialize in this kind of playing. They do a lot of it. They're so at home with it. So we tend to like, like to incorporate a lot of it into our music. It's kind of become 
um, a sound of new deco, so to speak, incorporating this drum and bass style um, with um, uh, orchestral instruments. So here we go. And, the, and I guess the other reason this kind of found its way into this piece is um, I had just been working on a suite um, with a couple of our musicians. Um, they have, a lot of our musicians have their own projects. Um, one project amongst the group is called Twin. They do a lot of this drum and bass music. And so I had just finished working on it um, and was really inspired to put this into this, this uh, suite. In fact, actually another little Easter egg for our musicians is this line right here. I, we had actually written for the twin suite and I just copied it over because I liked it so much. So, so I kind of, we we're kind of stealing from ourselves, but don't tell anybody that. Um, and now, you know, in this whole section, which really makes this whole overall piece kind of like a whole a fantasy, um, uh, like a Bill, a Bill Withers Fantasia, this Use Me line comes back again, but now just in a different style. So now, now that's over instead of the swing. So now this is the third time we've heard this line in the, in the third style. And so you can hear like, just by changing the rhythm, like and the same motif, like how you can have like a totally di different feel to, to, to that actual line. Like here's the more straight. So let me show when I'm, when a bit more drums are in. So that's like the first kind of more soul way. Then a little bit later when we're in go go. Uh, come back, come back, go go. Wish I could do this faster. That's the second time. And now a third time in another style. So it's this, uh, this whole, this rhythmic idea, this, this melodic figure keeps coming back, but just kind of mutated. Um, actually the, the material never really changes, just the beat under it. And you can feel how it's a totally different style. Um, so we're running out of time. So I'm just gonna kind of just show you guys a couple other things later in the piece. Um, one of my favorite Bill Withers song that he did with saxophone is Grover Washington, just the two of us. We don't really do the whole uh, song in the suite. We just, we just uh, kind of reference it and reference the instrumental motif. A lot of what um, I like to do in these suites is um, um, really um, champion and celebrate the instrumental motifs because since New Deco doesn't ever have a singer for these, um, it's sometimes it, it's, it's great to focus on like all the, the kind of non vocal even though we do usually include the vocal, vocal, vocal melodies, we, we, like to, we find ourselves celebrating um, the instrumentalists of, of these ensembles. So this is the end of these artists. So here's the intro to, here's just the two of us. It's kind of like a, um, um, just done on percussion and it sounds like this. <laughs> And that sound is created with four percussion players, the glockenspiel, the xylophone, the marimba, and the vibe. Um, and then we add some strings. So my, uh, my, my kind of inspiration in this piece was kind of like the idea of like the, the relationship between a parent and their kid. So first it's like very all innocent. And then, and then like, you know, you guys become teenagers and it gets a little bit contentious. And, that was kind of the whole, the whole inspiration surrounding that. Um, Ross, I think I'm kind of running out of time. Um, I think it's probably rather than kind of keep going, I'd rather just take any questions maybe from anybody or have a discussion about that if there are any. Yeah, let's do that. If anyone has a question, they can type it in or, or unmute yourself and go ahead and ask Sam uh, anything about the, the writing process or anything that you heard or would like to hear. Not a Kendra, you must have a question. I just, I find it so interesting to hear you talk about it because it's fun to hear it, but 
to to hear like where you came from this stuff the go-go stuff i didn't even know about that and <laughs> I, I always just love jamming because i just love the music but i don't know anything about it so it's cool to hear kind of the history the background of it and i i always love that that bit of just the two of us i really like that how how you juxtapose that like kind of uh, it reminded me a lot of um, the when we did the the Queen Suite with We Are the Champions and you did the piccolo uh, solo for Jack Jack and I was like yeah, yeah the kid thing and then the like yeah. more jamming out <laughs> that was really cool yeah it's interesting I think the challenge with 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 creating these suites is always like what's the justification of the orchestra playing this music you know is it just that you know it, it's are we covering it just for the sake of covering it or can we add something new to it and find a different layer and and like celebrate the in, in, intricacies of it and like find like new ways of putting it into a new context. Like Giacomo and I were just talking about this the other day, which is, you know, celebrating compo like when we're talking about like symphonic metamorphosis, Hinnemith took this theme of, of Weber and put it into a more with, with, with jazz and put it into a modern context. Um, even if you go back as far as like Brahms and the Haydn variation, this idea of taking older music and putting it into a, a more contemporary context, like what we do with the Withers, putting it into this drum and bass, is is it's not it's it's not just like a it's something new it's something that's been a practice for for hundreds of years so yeah i have sure. i have an, a question for you sam um i think most of us have played some kinds of covers of popular music before and usually we're sort of turned off by it because it's typically really bad you know yeah. and um your music I mean, I was, sometimes it's incredible. It's like the same as, you know, when we listen to like a Mahler symphony or something, we don't understand how many complexities there are there. We just know that we like it, but <laughs> going back and, and hearing the way, I didn't even notice some of these moments when you were layering different um, melodies on top of each other. And then of course you're saying like, then there's this whole other violin or string line going on around that this just like the, its own variation in and of itself. Um, so I think it's incredible, but I'm wondering um, if you can tell us about some of your main sort of inspirations as a composer, like whether it's classical or non-classical, like who, like in your l literal composition, like in your writing, like who do you yeah. That's a great question. I feel like I'm looking, it, it depends on what it's for. Obviously, like I've always been really drawn to, um, you know, a lot of old string writing from like the 70s and disco and 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 these, and, and like a lot of like, you know, that, that people kind of sometimes will call like hike and like licks are really like disco licks. Like, you know, these kinds of things that you found in the clubs in the 70s. And so like, I've always like personally been really drawn to that music, even since I was a kid. Like I'm like the only kid like in the corner listening to disco music. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so, so on, on the pop side, yeah, like I'm always looking for those kinds of inspiration on the classical side. You know, I do, I do sit in my, in my studio, I have tons of scores and it's funny. It's, you know, I like, I definitely find myself, um, looking just depending on, you know, what, what we're in, like for this, right. Um, I knew, I, I, I don't know when the idea came, but I knew that I wanted to include this Copeland idea in it. So then I really just started kind of looking at Copeland kind of for some harmonic ideas or, um, you know, some voicing inspirations. And, you know, sometimes I'll look, I'll, I'll look at John Williams or WC or, or just, you know, what I try to do for every piece and suite that I do is to try and do some sort of new element that I haven't used before, whether it's a string technique or, or it's a kind of progression or harmonization, just so I'm like, adding to my tool shed. So it's like, there, I wouldn't say there's any, any like one source. I would say it's just like all, all the sources. And, and if there's kind of a, a concept that I get for a piece, I'll, I'll go like directly to the source. Like when, another example, and when we did Nutcracker, you know, I kind of like envision the end. It just, Jock, the reference I get to Giacomo was like the end of Sibelius Five, which is just these like these hits that just seem to like have so much space between them. So it's like that, like I'll get that and then I'll go to the source. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like, going to the source material, like after I get that kind of bigger concept a little bit. So it's not like one place that I go, but it's many places. Cool. Awesome, is there, actually it looks like there was one other question that came in, Sam. Oh. Um, do you make any slight changes or uh, variations after 
let's say you have the finished product. For example, let's say we go to a performance, we have a few rehearsals. Are there any changes that you make during that process? Yeah, totally. You know, we're, cha- you know, especially now, um, it's, it's always been harder when you have printed sheet music because you don't wanna, we don't wanna torture Abby, our librarian with it. But now that we are on iPads, it's even easier to make changes. But yeah, we're, we're changing stuff um, always. Not, nothing usually like major, but there are always small changes that are going on throughout the whole week and then afterwards too. So that's a great point. And most of our musicians now, I think, use iPads. And so those changes are, are much easier to, to accommodate. All right. If there are any last minute questions, I'll give a few moments to, uh, to let those come Another in. Another question? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to ask a question on behalf of some of the kids here. I know that a couple of them are interested in in composing. Julian and I are kind of um, going over some basics of music theory right now. And I know he, for example, is really interested in composing. I was wondering if you could give any kind of advice or encouragement or something. Here's my advice about composing, because I'm a late, I'm a very late composer. Um, I didn't really start, I mean, I was a trumpet player up until, you know, four, well, since New Deco, so five years ago, and really didn't start writing professionally until 29. Um, and I think that for me, that like my improvements have to compo- like, I'm so blessed that I have new deco that I get to just write for all the time. So my, 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 my big point is just do it. Just start writing. It doesn't matter how much, you know, theory wise, just start writing stuff. Even if it sound, you know, just, just start the process and different kinds of projects as well. Like, so write something, write something else, like, and, and just, but just write. That's what I would say. And don't judge, just write, try stuff out, build on it scrap it just the process of writing is the only there's no substitute for it so so it's it's great to and 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 write in as many different ways as possible like maybe one day try and like write down on sheet music maybe another day record yourself and then record yourself over yourself you know like 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 build on like write just through instruments or uh write you know using a notation software program so my 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 advice is just write and write in as many different kinds of scenarios as you can, whether it's stylistically, whether it's the tools you use, et cetera. 